Hey folks, today I bring you a fun little project. Hopefully you enjoy this. It's designed to be fairly straightforward. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, right? Maybe more towards the advanced side of the beginner, but it's not something that you can handle with just a block of wood and a little saw, a knife, and a gouge. <laughs> and your mind. Let's do it. All right, so we've got our basswood. It's uh, just about uh, an inch. It's actually a little bit thicker, an inch and a quarter, uh, but an uh, inch and a half or, or inch wide wood would work uh, for this. Um, uh, it's a little wider than it needs to be, honestly, but uh, it's just a scrap piece that I had laying around. And uh, it's about four inches. It was a four inch by four inch block. I was using it as a test piece for sharpening, so now it's whittled down to about three and a half inches by four inches. But um, anyway, a four by four. A piece of uh, basswood or even a little smaller. If I drew this in the corner, um, we'd probably only utilize, uh, let's say, about uh, two and a half inches by uh, about three inches. So, really, a three inch by three inch block would work fine for this as well. To start, um, of course, you can see I did a little drawing. I found a picture of the uh, the cartoon version of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer as a little button buck, uh, just to keep it simple. And I want this to be really easy for us. Uh, and uh, I, I just went on there and, uh, and I sketched it. Um, you could go ahead, print a picture of Rudolph uh, from the internet, trace it onto your piece of wood with a, a, a graphite paper um, or, uh, or even a piece of tracing paper as well. Um, lots of different ways you can kind of transcribe it to the wood, uh, but the uh, graphite uh, transfer paper is probably the easiest way if you're not into drawing. And uh, of course my drawing is nowhere near as nice as if I just perfectly you know, scratched, you know, etched it on there with the graphite paper, but this works. So I've got uh, the basswood. I've got just a basic ruler. I've got a pencil. Yeah, just your old-fashioned uh, cheapo HB2 Dixon pencil. Uh, and then I've got my knife. And one other tool that uh, I didn't mention is uh, a strop. And I actually, believe it or not, uh, when I'm really trying to fine-tune a blade, I still occasionally use a hand strop. Um, I have a great power strop tool. Um, in fact, I uh, I really like this uh, this knife uh, strop. It's actually a pretty decent uh, situation for knives if you're not trying to spend a whole bunch of money. Uh, I'm pretty sure these aren't uh, much more over 100 bucks, if that, even less. So you pull the trigger. It sets on a table. Pull the trigger. And you can adjust the speed and the, the uh, positioning of the belt. And you strop it with a uh, green honing compound. And uh, something like Zam is what I like to use. And, uh, and so you just apply it to the belt. And then you can just actually strop your, uh, strop your blade, right? Give it a couple of quick passes. And it really polishes your blade up nicely, all right? So this is a, a WorkSharp product. Um, I do have, uh, this is a Ken Onion. I do have an affiliate link below if you're interested in checking this out. Uh, it's a nice way of sharpening. But uh, another really simple way of sharpening if you're not trying to spend money is, a, uh, is just a basic wooden strop uh, with uh, a leather piece on it. You could just dress the wood itself. Um, you know, really, uh, wood makes a great strop as well once you've rubbed some uh, Zam compound on it. So I digress. I should say before we move any further, the uh, blade that I'm using is an inch and a half uh, 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 long and just about a half inch wide. So it's not super uh, uh, exotic. Uh, of course, this is a Helvi knife. Uh, you can buy these if you just do a quick Google search of Helvi, H-E-L-V-I-E. -E. Not affiliated with them at all, but uh, they make a great knife and uh, keep them busy. I know they're not struggling for work. They have tons and tons of uh, orders on their knives, so it might take a while to get it, but... That's that, guys. Let's get into it. First, I'm going to cut this out on my bandsaw, right? So if you don't have a bandsaw at home, you can use a coping saw. In fact, uh, I'm pretty sure that you can just go to uh, Amazon or your local hobby store or uh, um, uh, tool store and buy a little, I believe it's called a coping saw. It is a very thin blade. And uh, if it's not a coping saw, let me know in the comments. Uh, that's my memory of it. It's a thin blade, and it's a pull saw, and you can attach the blade to the uh, kind of C shape of it. It's about like this, and then the blade picture going from thumb tip to fingertip, and it goes back and forth, and you can actually just kind of saw out your block that way. That's an easy way of doing it. Or you could do it the old-fashioned way and just uh, 
use an axe, right? You could go outside, you could, you know, kind of take the big chunks out with a nice sharp axe, take that axe to the, uh, to the belt grinder. I should mention that if you have an axe and it's dull, the Ken Onion will actually, uh, belt, the, the belt will come out and you can replace it with a sandpaper belt. It actually comes with it. Uh, and then you can grind all your blades as well. You don't have to just drop on them. So you could grind up uh, uh, your axe and make it razor sharp. You don't want it to be like uh, dull like for chopping firewood sharp. You want it to be razor sharp. Use that. number of other ways. You could also just use a push or a pull saw to take the corners off or just be less lazy and do it with your knife, right? You can just take your time and work through the wood like so and eventually get down to the basic shape. If you have a smaller piece of wood, you won't need to remove as much. But I digress. Let's get into the actual project, huh? using a bandsaw, I don't want to pull out uh, without uh, making sure that the blade is stopped. I can with little straight cuts, but where I do any curving at all, I can pull the blade off of the tracks and uh, mess the whole thing up. So I like to stop the saw with uh, any situation where I'm pulling out uh, pretty hard, pretty um, long lengths. And notice I'm not going right to the line, I'm leaving a little bit of space around the lines. And I'm also using uh, really too thick of a blade. This bandsaw blade, I believe, is about uh, half an inch. And so a thinner blade, like an eighth inch or a sixteenth inch, sixteenth inch blade, would be a lot better for navigating tight turns. Again, uh, it's not the ideal setup, but uh, I'm not going to change the bandsaw blade for this little project. with that.
right? So we just made two passes through the legs, like so. So it's just a, about a couple of blades widths. Um, I'm going to say about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Maybe, yeah, somewhere between that and an eighth. Um, and uh, now we're basically ready to uh, start whittling on this. So <clears throat> to start, I'm going to uh, take my knife and uh, kind of refine any parts of the outline uh, that need to be refined. So in this case, I'm noticing that there are some uh, kind of subtle issues with uh, little bumps and such from the uh, chatter of the blade. So I'm just going to come in and start to uh, clean those up. All right, so <laughs> this is kind of a funny audible to call in the middle of this project. Um, and this is kind of the, the way that I go about designing a project is uh, it's kind of on the fly. So uh, the more I look at this and the more I think about the overall width of this piece, uh, hopefully it doesn't throw too many people off, I'm going to split this in half. And I'll tell you my reasoning for this. The more I look at this, the more I realize, well, a huge amount of this piece is going to have to be removed, right? And I thought, well, probably about uh, uh, a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here it's gonna have to come off well that equals about a half an inch of material that's being removed and then I thought wait a second if I just split this in half I've got just a little over a half inches worth of material here which is about how much I'd be removing from the sides and there's not a whole lot about Rudolph as Bambi, uh, you know, not as Bambi, but as a kind of, uh, you know, a little fawn, a Bambi-like character. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, stuff coming off of his head, right? That you don't have the antlers. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. Let's do it. Cut it in half. <laughs> it kind of seems oddly maniacal to be cutting Bambi in half in front of the camera, but uh, I guess... It's happening either way. Here we go. Uh, just a couple words of uh, caution here. I tend to use pieces of scrap wood or something to hold the piece, especially when I'm working with something so small. I don't want to cut myself. Two bambies. Okay. Use the saw to uh, split the, uh, the legs in half and uh, got a little bit carried away there. Uh, this one went to one side more than the other, but uh, as long as you can fit your blade in, you can always pare it down. Get a little bit more gap in between the two. Alright, so pay attention to that outline. Alright, so, uh, pretty close to the uh, kind of outline there, just a few little corrections. Come in with our gouge at the uh, leg meeting the belly. Kind of the crotch. In there. Nice. And come in here the same way. All right. All right. So looking at it from this side. You can see here that I split the legs, and uh, really all that means is that this leg is going to be behind this leg, right? So uh, I'm actually going to take the leg that's uh, in the back area here, this one, and I'm going to cut it uh, back further in, uh, that, and uh, kind of define this this front one, because this is going to be his uh, well his uh, left leg, and then this is going to be his right leg. So I'm going to carve this one back. I'm going to start by kind of taking this area here and slowly taking little bits at a time. 
<laughs> I say that and then I take off the whole leg in one fell swoop. Don't try this at home, folks. Take it slow. Nice. There's that. We got his leg. And then we can do the same here, actually. Kind of confusing, but really we just want to make that one leg look like it's sitting ahead of the other one, right? And so I'm going to take this little piece behind this leg out because that's not necessary, right? Then we have his legs kind of like this, right? one ahead of the other. So I'm going to slowly come back here and remove this uh, back side of this front leg. Again, taking small chunks. Be careful that you're not cutting too far into the other leg. Well, the actual leg, the other leg here. All right, happy with that. It kind of looks like he's got a step forward here, right? There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's nice. All right, I'm gonna start to uh, pair away at the chest a little, little tiny cuts. Coming in. Right, now I'm just starting to take the edges off even uh, more so as I've start, started to get the main shape here. Get the opening of the mouth in, like so. I mean, you know that uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, he's got a mouth on him. That guy uh, whew, likes to talk, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you can carve that mouth closed if you... Uh, it's up to you, really. You know, it depends on your patience level. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, all right. So let's, uh... It's tempting, isn't it, to just start taking big chunks off of the sides, right? And start rounding it out right away. But I want to take it at one plane at a time uh, and really start thinking about things uh, sequentially uh, just to make it more straightforward, right? If I got too carried away with the uh, with the carving too early on, it'd just get confusing as far as the tutorial goes. So, just trying to get these lines nice and tight. And I I could have a drawing on the front here, but uh, I just I just don't care to, right? All right. Uh, so let's start to think about some shapes here. This is uh, where it is a little scary. You're going to start removing your some of your uh, drawing lines. That's why it's nice to have the outline nice and tight. That way you're uh, you're not as reliant. You don't need your drawings as much. Um, actually, before we do that, uh, we have the same situation we did in the front back here. So this leg sits a little bit further back. You can see I drew it forward of the, of the leg uh, to the other side of it, right? His back uh, right leg. So I'm actually going to take a little bit away from the front of his back left leg, like so. Okay, be careful of those uncontrolled chips, those splits, right? Um, luckily, that chip didn't take away more than we needed, but uh, you can very well do that. So, helps to keep a clean floor. You can find the pieces that fell on the ground and uh, repair them. Repair them. So, all right, so that's looking good. I push this leg back. You can start to see the other leg behind it showing up, right, like so. I'm going to take a little bit more, a tiny bit more out of the uh, leg. All right. Okay, like that. Nice. Oh, I'm going to take some out of the back of this leg just to compensate for it. So it looks like this leg is a little bit more forward. All right. That way we get this kind of walking effect. It's kind of in motion, not static, like so. All right. Okay, take a little bit out of his buttocks there. 
and this one might have a little less of that curve because his leg is straightened out more. This one's further back, so you're going to see a little bit more of that glute. And uh, we're really close, very, very close to just uh, starting to work on the overall shape, get past that outline. I'm going to shorten up his snout a little bit because he is kind of a button buck. He's young. doesn't have that nice, long uh, Roman nose of the big old bucks you're going to see. I'm learning these terms uh, from... Actually, from an, from hunters, a couple of guys in the area just commissioned a piece. They're uh, they're the ones who apparently founded this huge our, our state's I think or, or at least uh, our county's largest uh, Facebook group for hunters, and uh, it's a great resource if you're uh, looking to find some uh, big bucks, some big pictures of bucks as inspiration for your carvings. I wish I could tell you the name of it. <laughs> All I can tell you is that it would have been great if you knew. So I'm coming in. I'm actually seeing that, speaking of the buck, the, the button on top of his head, that's what that is, just a little horn. horn. <laughs> it's not a horn, it's an antler, but it needs to be a little more prominent. So just clean that up. Make that deer a little more prominent to the head. A little stop and relief cut. Awesome. Alright, got a little separation between the two. Anything we can do so that we're not as reliant on that profile drawing we have on there is going to really help us out a lot. All right. You can see I've really kind of sharpened that up. It might take a tiny bit more off his tush. And he's looking pretty cute. A little bit out of his neck. Cool. All right. All right, let's not get too nitpicky too early on. Uh, so I'm going to start to do the first thing of uh, narrowing the, uh, the body, or really just kind of taking the hard edges off of it, I guess, before I get too set on narrowing it. But uh, coming around. I might just start to narrow the uh, tail a little bit, like so. Okay, see how it's starting to come to a a point like that. All right, taking the corners off of his neck, his head, body. Now I might be taking my. Uh, myself and rushing a little bit just to for the sake of the video but you don't have to rush at home it's definitely no timeline for you right you got all the time in the world well if you're anything like me you probably don't so you got people to see stuff to do okay all righty Edges are coming off. All right. Already looking good. My door just shut by itself. That's it's not scary at all, is it? I'm not scared. Are you scared? Yeah, well, that's good, because I'm not either.
Definitely not scared. Never scared. Real tough. I have a tree leaning up against my house. Speaking of getting scared, a neighbor gave me a probably a 10 or 12 foot long cedar limb, hoisted it up, leaned it up against my house, and last night in a windstorm, it crashed and fell down on my garbage, woke me up, scared that living tar out of me. That's probably the only time, though, I've ever been scared. I'm going to take a little bit out of his uh, hoof right in here. Now, occasionally I'm taking a kind of risky cut, just so you can see what I'm doing, but I don't recommend that you hold the piece this way. But I just wanted you to see how I took that little curve out of the inside of his leg there. It's going to be a dainty little guy. Like I said, he's probably no more than three inches tall in total. Yep, he's just under. He's like two and a half, uh, two and three quarter inches. And, uh, about two and a half inches long. So, and again, five eighths an inch wide. Actually, look at that. Yeah, about five eighths. Almost done taking these edges off. A lot of little edges to round, actually, on this guy. Don't need to round them all because uh, we'll start getting into the shapes here a little bit more. All right, so coming back to it. I want to define the uh, hind leg a little bit more by taking a little stop cut. You can see I'm just following the little curve of his of his leg, like so. All right, I'm going to take that chunk out. Now this is again to kind of preserve the drawing because there's a reason that line was there, right? His hind leg, he's, he's might be a baby, but uh, <laughs> he's got some he's got some powerful legs, right? So <laughs> you don't want to mess with Bambi. I'm sorry, uh, Rudolph. <laughs> And so you want to give him some uh, definition to his muscles. That way you're not losing, you're not losing that uh, shape. And so you can come over here and kind of do the same thing. You could draw it, but uh, I'm not. I'm just going to kind of allude to it. Comes right off the leg, a little curve, a little turn like so. I'll cut to it. I can actually start to round the belly like so. All right, one thing that just occurred to me as well is I'm going to need to split the uh, ears in the same way that I took the bandsaw and split the uh, legs down the middle. So I'm just going to take the bandsaw and uh, just go down the, the length of the ears. I, I won't uh, get into the antler or the, uh, yeah, the antler or the button, uh, of course, because that doesn't need to be split in half. But two ears, split it in half. Uh, if you don't have uh, a bandsaw, just use a little handsaw again. Or... Just go in there with your V-tool, right? I mean, you can just slowly get in there, like so. You really don't even need the bandsaw. Just kind of makes your life a little easier is all. All right? All right, so I've made that cut. Excuse my adjustments. And uh, now I'm going to start to think a little bit more about uh, the overall shape of this guy. Well, of course, I narrowed the tail. I started to uh, take the, the limbs and move them appropriately. Uh, going to narrow the uh, the nose a bit, the snout, right? Because, of course, it's a, it's very blocky, as it, as it were. And so I'm going to uh, just make a quick mental note uh, and maybe even a little uh, knife indication of the eyes because uh, I don't want to lose the placement of the eyes. So I'm going to make a stop cut. So I'm going to come in with the outline of the eye, like so, and just trace it. It doesn't have to be super deep, just want to make sure and kind of remember the general location of the eye. That's my objective here. Nice, okay. Pretty good. This line, carry this line over. Actually helps us to kind of see if we started too early. It looks like we did. We're going to take it back just a little bit more. Happy with that. I'm just going to incise that line generally, so we don't lose all the hard work of our drawing. Come in with that knife, just tracing the outline of it, like so. Beautiful.
All right, now we're going to narrow that nose, right? So saying goodbye to our nice little uh, drawing on the face. Sad, isn't it? Might uh, create a little bit more of a mouth, a little bit more of an opening of the mouth here. That kind of helps. And uh, take the uh, bottom of his jaw down just a tiny bit. Again, just getting closer to that drawing. Okay. Take his nose down just a little bit more. Cool. Come behind his button, his uh not button, but his uh his big red nose. Kind of accentuate that, okay. Not a lot of pressure. Make sure that tool is sharp so you're not threatening to cut yourself. All right, nice. Okay, let's do the dirt. Let's do the, uh, the scary deed. I'm supposed to do the dirty deed. Let's do the scary deed and uh, narrow his head. It's never gonna feel safe. I'm just taking a, a bit out of that, like so, and the same over here, just little bits at a time. Making sure to check my profile, or kind of the top view. And what we're looking for is, a, excuse me, kind of a wedge, you know, something that narrows to the end, to the end of the ball of the nose. And if it helps you, it might be a good idea for you to kind of draw a little ball so that you're not taking too much. You don't want to take that point away, or that, that ball away. But you can kind of narrow down to that point. All right. Now we're in business. We're starting to make him uh, shapely here. I'm going to start to round the head as well. So I'm really getting a little bit more serious uh, about uh, taking the uh, edges off. And gosh, earlier I made a funny blunder that I just realized. Uh, I said that I won't split the button in half on the, the buck with the bandsaw. But I alluded to the fact that I wouldn't need to split it in half uh, at all. And of course I will, uh, but I'll be doing it with a knife. So in other words... There are two buttons on the buck, uh, and so we're going to do that. We're going to take our knife and create a little wedge right in between the little buttons, a little bit at a time, like so. See that? Okay. Silly me. All right, I'm going to take some off of the edge now. Like so. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right. I want to take the uh, ears and uh, angle them out a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, profile uh, and uh, turn them, take them in at the base, right? So where they meet the head. So right here, I'm going to take that ear back just to the head, like so. See how I did that? And you see now how that ear's kind of kicked out a little bit more? And as we take the head back, it'll look even more angled out. Just like that. All right, same over here. Line of the head. At risk of taking too much away. Be careful. Okay. I'm just starting to round the head, and I want to take uh, a fair amount of material from beneath the head. So this is kind of the headline. I want to take a little bit more out of that neck, thin that neck a bit more. So I'm going to do that. Get rid of those saw marks as well. Oh, sorry about the focus. Hopefully that's uh, better. I get so caught up in this thing, my uh, manual focus, I lose track of it. 
my video guy, uh, is, you know, young Samuel, is not uh, helping me on these videos as he is on the uh, the online school. So. Uh, with some of the videos on the online school, I should say. And, uh, yeah, that's okay. We're making do. Taking the saw marks out of his belly. All right, I threw a couple extra lights on. That way there aren't as many shadows. As I was saying, just taking that neck down. Just taking the hard edges off of it and... I'm not worrying too much about how clean every cut is just yet, because it's still pretty early on in the carving. I'm just trying to make it less blocky, right? All right, I'm going to kind of narrow the body. It's also a little bit of this kind of bubble that we talked about here on the arm, right? So at the top of this uh, <laughs> arm, at the top of his leg, uh, his front legs, we're going to just draw a little ball. And that's probably... Uh, I'm going to say quarter of an inch, let's see. Just about a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. Of course, it's a circle, so. And uh, that is uh, an inch and a half from the bottom of the foot. So we'll do the same thing here, an inch and a half. Sorry, inch and a quarter, is that right? Yeah, inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter from the bottom of that foot. I'm going to draw the uh, kind of circle. And we're going to trace around that circle, roughly, with our knife. And uh, this is not an exact science here. So I don't make it one. Part of the fun of uh, such a simple project as this is, man, you just don't have to take it so seriously. I mean, you can really enjoy yourself. It's it's actually relaxing, you know. Um, and I feel that way about my carvings in general. You know, the more experience you get, the more relaxed you get making projects. And uh, you can kind of tune out and unwind. But there is just something so special about making something that's ultra straightforward. You know, it isn't always easy when you're starting out. Uh, and so to have something that's a little bit less complicated is huge. So, all right, I'm going to pair the uh, tail down a bit more at the buttocks and just come above that uh, bottom, at his the top of his butt. And create a stop cut, right? like so. So following that curve, that round curve of the bottom up to the top of his back, and just making a little stop cut. See that? Right. Do the same thing to the other side. Like so. This is going to be pretty delicate here, so I don't want to uh, remove more than I uh, ought to. All right, and uh, you can actually take one side off a little more than the other and kind of carry it off to one side. See how I've done that? This side's a little bit softer, so it's straight up and down. Gives it more of a natural look. You can even actually take a little scoop out of the, uh, of the tail, so a little bit of material out of the tail to make it kind of turn forward. It's a typical thing of a white tail. So I'm just using a scooping motion. Notice how I'm turning the blade through little bits of wood at a time while kind of slicing. Okay, This is a good thing to practice if you're not comfortable with this scooping cut on a scrap piece of wood. Okay, And it doesn't always work depending on your grain. You know? So uh, that's something to experiment with as well. If your tool isn't responding or your knife isn't responding well to the grain of the wood, it means you probably can't get away with that sort of a cut. So. I'm going to take a little bit more out from under his bum. Uh, well, actually, the top of his bum meeting the tail right here. And uh, that's starting to look pretty nice. Good. And his little tail sticking up. Great. All right. So I'm going to uh, round his little legs, his tiny little legs, and kind of get that knife in between the, uh, the saw cuts. You can hear my stomach is grumbling. It says, uh, enough coffee. Give us food. All right. And, uh, yeah. 
It's that time of the year. And these make excellent little Christmas gifts. You know, if you have a niece or a nephew or a son, a daughter, maybe you even have a grandkid. Uh, maybe you're so blessed and lucky to have a grandkid. Uh, this is a fun little gift that, uh, you know, hopefully they keep for a lifetime. I mean, you could really easily turn this, like, you know, into a Christmas ornament. Um, it's a cute little figurine. It's actually a little cute toy as well. And, uh, you know, if you're giving your grandson, your niece or nephew, your son a, a carving like this, it's going to mean a lot more to them as they grow up um, than a toy that you just bought them, you know. And uh, sure, it doesn't glow. It doesn't talk back to you. It's not uh, AI. But, uh, man, it's just a... It's just a piece of a uh, little piece of artwork you can just gift them. So, where where else can you get that? You know, I think it's cool anyway. Just gonna keep taking the inside of this ear, kind of spread the ears out just a little bit more. I took too much out. See that that one cut. So I'm gonna make smaller little cuts. There it is. There's our focus in between the ears. Small little cuts. Big cuts. Lead to big errors. Okay. Gonna kind of round uh, his head a little bit more. Take a little bit out of those buttons. Helps if you can uh, go online and find a little front view of his head as well and see the spacing of his buttons. I've done that and I'm just looking at those little references. If you want, you can even draw it on the front view of him to give you a little reminder for how these look, these little buttons. There they are, you can see them. Contrast to the floor. A little bit at a time. Now, the grain is super important. Um, when you're carving something like this, uh, you know, issue just as significant as the grain in setting something like this up is the sharpness of your tool. And if your tool is dull, you're going to have real problems no matter how you've set your piece into the grain. Uh, ideally, you're going to want your grain to go in this direction because these little legs are going to bust off if you have the grain going in this direction. It's not going to be sturdy. So if you can, try to keep that grain direction going uh, parallel to the legs. That's going to make that carving last a lot longer. Uh, so if it is a gift to your kids or your grandkids or niece or nephew, you can actually keep it. And they can keep it. It yeah. won't, won't be a loss to them. All right. So making progress on this guy. He's looking pretty cute. I want to narrow his neck. I want to make his chest a little prouder. And the best way to do that is to take a little bit out more of his neck. I'm going to start narrowing up, narrowing his, his neck up a little bit. Give him a nice strong body. Okay. He may be a young man, but, uh, you know, we can broaden his shoulders a little. He may or may not have been working out. It's, uh, it's hard to say. Now, if you're carving along with me at this point, and you're kind of stressed out because, well, most of your drawing is gone. You're not entirely sure what you're doing. Take some deep breaths. We're getting through this together, guys. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it, so no need to be uh, scared or insecure. Now I'm going to take that knife again and come in just outline that circle that we made on the other side. We never did outline that. Just take a little bit out of that, like so. That relief cut is coming in at an angle. So straight in for the stop cut. Then I'm taking that knife, laying it flat against the body, like so, and just paring down to that stop cut that I made. Just to give him that kind of rounded shoulder. That's all. Okay. Because we kind of want to create that rounded shoulder. It's not going to stay that sharp. For sure it won't. But, uh, yeah, we do want it to be uh, pronounced a little bit. I'm going to keep narrowing that neck up. Stop cut under the head. Cut from the top of the chest to that stop cut. Little bits at a time. 
Don't rush this, guys. Don't rush this. You can rush your other carvings, but don't rush this one. Just take your time. Get used to it. And as you get more experienced, you can kind of whip these out in no time. You know, if you start now, you can probably get one for each of your kids or grandkids or niece and nephew by the by the time Christmas rolls around, right? You got a couple weeks. If you're watching this at the time it came out, if you're not, well, you might only have time for one or two, or maybe you're practicing for next year, right? So I'm narrowing down, narrowing down. I'm narrowing down the uh, the mouth, right? So the mouth is going to narrow a little bit beyond that of the the uh, head. So the head's going to be kind of round. And uh, I'm just going to create a little transition. See that? Between the uh, nose and the mouth, like so. Just, it makes him look a lot cuter. And you know, it is kind of a cartoon character, so it doesn't have to be realistic. Really careful with those, uh, those cuts. If you can cut towards the head, it's going to be a little bit safer than away because you're actually at risk of chipping this whole section off if you carve away from the face. All right, rounding that head off again. Now in the uh, animation, the cartoon, the uh, you know our our little uh, Rudolph is quite large headed. He's got a big head on him, so you know I mean he's working on it. He's uh you know I mean he's got he's just got an ego and. Uh, no, I'm talking about the size of his head, obviously, literal size. It, and so we want to make that round. And uh, man, I know, I know what you're thinking. It could have been a comedian. I get it, I get it. But you know, you got to pick something, right? And I chose wood carving. Uh, wood carving is far more lucrative. <laughs> I can make fifteen dollars per one of these. I don't know if you know that, but uh, yes. I'm sitting up in my my castle, making this uh, whittle whittle project. So I'm just uh, coming in under that mouth, and in the same way that I took the nose, the kind of snout, and narrowed it, I'm taking that mouth and I'm narrowing it from the bottom as well, so it kind of narrows in there. Okay, and yeah, you might lose a little bit of that line, but you still can see the impression from that knife mark. That's the beauty of that little uh, stop cut that uh, shows you where things were, and uh, it's hard to do that any other way than just kind of cutting it in prematurely. So guys, this is not going to be an ultra-realistic carving, so believe it or not, we're actually not too far away from uh, some of the kind of final stages of this thing. I'm going to keep rounding this out. I'm looking to get rid of any real squareness, especially any leftover saw marks as I go around it. So that's where I might just start to take the edges off, right? Just kind of round them off, like so. I want to leave again. I want to leave the belly a little bit narrower to let the uh, legs kind of widen out towards the back. Like so. Because he's not, uh, he's not too pudgy. Yeah. I mean, he's, I don't know. He could be uh, keto or, I don't know. Who knows, man. Nowadays, Bambi could be, uh, Bambi. Why do I keep calling him Bambi? Rudolph, uh, he's probably gluten free. You know, I'm guessing he's dairy intolerant. And, uh, man, I mean, he's thin. He, uh, honestly, he could use to eat a couple cheeseburgers, but, uh, man. Kind of feel bad for him, actually. He's getting thin. He's kind of gaunt. He's virgin cacactic over here, but, uh, cacactic is a word a doctor taught me. Uh, Dr. Thomas Kubota. Dr. Thomas Kubota, teacher. Uh, oh, sorry, a, a doctor that uh, took one of my classes taught me that cacactic means like really deathly thin, like not gaunt, but, uh, which means pretty dang thin. Uh, it means like you're about to, you're about to die. You're like really too thin, but Rudolph's not there. Let's not get dark here. Okay. This is, uh, keeping it fun, keeping it PG. Rudolph's just, uh, he could eat a cheeseburger is all I'm saying. That's all not a big deal. Not judging him, uh, judging him at all. So, all right. Just taking the saw marks off. See, we're just getting kind of a cute round little figure. I'm going to also take his legs down a little. I want them to widen as they get to the feet. I want the feet to kind of widen. Yeah, it's a caricature. So 
it's not going to be realistic. Those feet might be a little big, you know, and those legs might be a little thin, but uh, it's fun. It's cute. That's all that matters. So you're enjoying yourself, you're getting the experience of uh, putting that sharp, sharp edge through the fibers of that wood. So you can hear that sweet sound. Kind of making the legs a little narrower and making a little stop cut at the feet so they widen out. The feet get a little wider than the legs. So you can see I'm just kind of indicating the difference between the foot and the leg by coming in. It's actually more of a V cut than a stop cut. So I'm coming in like so. Cut here. Like that. And another cut here. All right. Same thing over here. V cut here. Not a lot of pressure. I'll cut the top there. Relieve that out. Same thing on the sides of the leg. Like so. Okay. And the inside of the leg as well. A little bit tighter quarters here, but we can handle it. Not without bumping that camera, though. Same thing to all these feet, with those uh, shallow V cuts, you know, that makes that outline. That's what we're looking at. Same thing on all the feet. I'm going to just pare the legs down and not bore you with all that. Come right back. All right, you can see now the feet are a little wider at the base, which is good. That's uh, just like the cartoon. And uh, now I want to take just a little bit out of the leg. Now, the leg on the deer, and especially in this animation, kind of curves a little bit. has a little subtle kind of angle to it. So I've drawn it on there, right? Get this little uh, kick back on the leg and the same thing over here. So I'm going to carve that in. Again, practicing your scoop and cut. And that relief cut. Like so. Same thing over here. Taking that leg back. A little scooping cut. Very 
good. And I'm going to take a little bit of this leg from the back over here out. So I'm going to take a little scoop from under here out from the back here. All right, like that. All right, I've kind of found a little sweet spot for the eyes, and I'm going to set them in with, uh, again, that little V-cut. Right? This is a bit of a challenge, and so uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself. I think there was a surgeon somewhere on a podcast I listened to who said that if you're trying to stabilize your hands and you're struggling, you can actually use uh, this little trick. It's a, some sort of a biological hack. Of, I don't really know how it works, but you can actually kind of move another extremity. So for instance, I'm leaning on my left leg. I'm actually moving my right foot. Sometimes, when I think of it, not always, but I try to use this to uh, help me to stabilize my hand and uh, it seems to work pretty well actually, surprisingly. So anyway, I'm going around, I'm tracing a little uh, indication I have of the uh, eye. I'm coming in, I'm just rounding, taking a little bit out of the perimeter of the eye. So if you ever see my leg going while I'm carving, it's not because I'm nervous. It's not a twitch. I'm actually trying to use, uh, use it to stabilize my hands if possible. All right, I might have lost the line on this side. I'm going to recarve it in. Excuse my bumping the lens. There we go. Got a little chip out up here because we got a little carried away with our stop cuts. Too many of them. And we can just bring the area surrounding it down just a little bit as well to reduce the amount of uh, depth there. Lots of little ways you can fix a mistake when you carve the eyes. Alright, like so. Pretty good. Looks like this eye is a little lower than this eye, but. Uh, Still looks pretty cute, I would say. I might just raise the arch of this one a little bit. And I'll come on the other eye and do the same thing on that. A little bit taller of an arch. Oh, being careful, I'm not chipping that out. That looks good. Take some of this eye out. Rounding it. And I might just take a little bit more here as well. To match the other eye, how low it is. A little bit, a little chunk. And that's a little better. Cool. Yeah, happy with that. I'm just going to keep rounding the eye, using that tool mostly almost flat against the uh, the eye, but just tilted enough so it starts to cut, and just using my thumb to control that knife, this thumb here, and just a little bit of a prying motion. This is a really great time to sharpen your knife. If you haven't already, before you get too carried away of carving the eyes, it's a great thing to uh, hone that baby so that you're, uh, you're not just pushing grain around, you're actually really, you're actually, you know, able to control the blade. When it gets to these small details, uh, that becomes really important. Cool. That's looking mighty cute. I'm going to carve off the pencil lines. Beautiful. And uh, same thing over here. Carve off pencil lines. You can erase them if you don't want to remove more material. If you're quite happy with it. But I needed to clean off the saw marks off the side of his face anyway. So I'm totally content to carve those, saw, those uh, pencil marks off, I mean. Cool. Pretty cute.
All right, now I'm going to come behind the ears and just sort of uh, narrow the, the base of the ear. So uh, I don't want the uh, ears to be too wide at the base because it's just not the way this little cartoon character is designed. So I'm just going to narrow the base a little bit, being really careful not to bump our little buttons. Okay, okay so see how it's kind of narrowing? A little bit to little tiny chunks. I mean, I'm just taking such little bites out of this thing. I think bites is a linker term, if I'm not mistaken. I think he'll, he would say that. Little bites. I'm not sure. All right. Man, and it's so easy just to accidentally chip one of these little ant antlers, one of these little, uh, well, yeah, antlers. I guess they're just buttons, but uh, still probably considered an antler. I mean, gosh, just light, light pressure. Really watch your blade, too. Okay, see how it's kind of narrowing now? Or you can really see that. And uh, you can take the ear and point them a little bit at the tip. Not a not a real sharp point, but just a little bit of a dull point. So take a little off the edges to give it that point. Same over here. Looks like we already got that over here actually. Now I can take that uh, number th that three millimeter number nine. Just create a little hollow in the ear canal. Just a little kind of almond shape there, like so. Alright. Same thing over here. Oh, looks like we busted our ear off. Oh no! Well, that's why we uh, have super glue, right? Let's see if we can find it. This actually gives me an excellent opportunity, <laughs> despite my woes, to uh, promote a really great product uh, that I've been buying for a while now. Of course, I'm not sponsored by it, so there's no ulterior motives here. Metropel is awesome. Uh, well, and I should say, too, if I was sponsored by them, I wouldn't promote them unless they were awesome. But, uh, <laughs> point being really great accelerator I'll show you what that does in just a moment so I've got my uh, super glue I like to use a thicker glue that's mainly the only kind of thought rule I have as far as glues go I don't like to use a thin glue on basswood just because it seems to be an issue uh, seems to soak in too quickly and uh, that's no good so I got my super glue on there Try not to apply too much. I'm just gonna hold that in place for a moment. And as soon as it sits kind of comfortably on there, apply a little pressure. Get my Mitropel. Not sure how to pronounce it. Get that nicely seated and spray it. dry and what's really great about that product is it will speed up the drying process so that you're a lot less likely to break it again okay awesome all right just gonna let that dry a little bit longer it's an accelerator so it just uh, makes things a little bit quicker back to my ears I pushed a little too hard and maybe I thin these ears out just a little tiny bit too much but uh, I'm gonna support the ear this time with my finger and just try and finish this cut without doing any more damage. Might be a good time to sharpen this little guy too. It's a little, uh, little dirty on there. Those cuts are not quite clean as I'd like, but they'll work. No time to be a perfectionist, right? We have a job to do here.
Okay. It's actually the roundness of the back of the eye is uh, something I'm just starting to notice. So I made a little bit more of an almond shape. The back side is round, so it's almost more like a teardrop on this character. So I'm going to take a little bit more out of the back and just kind of round it, if you will. The other side. All right. Woo! This was a long one. Really close. Just a little bit of uh, squareness to remove out of the tail. Some saw marks in there as well. You can just take out. Or maybe just chatter from the knife. Don't want this to be uh, too uh, square. Yeah, you can just go over the whole thing and if you notice any little uh, edges that you don't feel like should be there. Or saw marks or chatter from the tool. You just go in and kind of make some nice little cuts and create that like tool finish that we're all after. But uh, man, we made a lot of progress on this little guy. Well, we basically got him carved. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to uh, paint them. I guess uh, I say next video, but I mean the next step in this video. So just keep tuning in. And uh, we're at the home stretch here, guys. We're uh, very patient and uh, it's uh, in deep water here as far as carving goes so happy with that I'm gonna take the point out of uh, out of the tail too I don't want it to quite be that pointed kind of more rounded over actually like so okay there we go and mighty cute let's paint him Okay, so excuse the loud noise. I've got my air filtration going, and I'm going to do a quick coat of sealant. This is just a polycrylic, water-based, clear mat. You can use uh, any sort of uh, sealant. I'm going to use an acrylic paint here, so keep in mind you want your sealant to dry fairly quickly. We're also joined by the, uh, by the lovely Annalise. It's my wife. She's working on her own little carving. She can't hear us right now because she's listening to the video that I made, carving her own little tree. Say hi, Annalise. Hi. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Okay. So, um, yeah. Gonna be pretty light with this. Okay, and uh, keep a paper towel nearby, just blot off any excess, because I don't want it to puddle and get all ooey-gooey. And I do want it to dry quickly as well. So I might uh, use a, a hair dryer to accelerate that process. Again, it's a water-based finish, so a uh, hair dryer will speed it up, whereas if you're using an oil base, it wouldn't make much difference. So I'm going to uh, take a little bit of water and I'm going to mix it with my uh, brownish red paint. The paint color is, uh, I think it's called Burnt Umber. And it's just kind of a reddish brown, a little bit of red tone in there. Uh, if you look at the animation, uh, he has a lot of red in his brown, uh, at least the uh, deer does. So I'm going to kind of go over... Uh, most of his body, I want to pay attention to a couple of areas and, and try to avoid uh, painting with the brown. Um, I want to avoid painting the eye area with the brown. I want to avoid this little under the neck area and then right at the chest. So I'm going to stay away from all that and just kind of come in and just take a little bit of that reddish brown. And, uh, oh, I should say also, most of this tail is going to be white. I'm just going to, a little, just going to do a little stripe. That's going to be brown. Okay. The rest of it's going to be white, so stay away from that tail. And I do want to water this down if possible. Um, I can tell you a little secret, but you have to promise not to tell anyone. I am actually using oil. I changed my mind last minute, and uh, 
uh, what the problem was, I have just a really basic acrylic set. I didn't really want to mix up uh, my basic acrylic set. I wanted to use my burnt uh, burnt umber. So that's the main reason for uh, using the oil. It's not any uh, serious reason. Uh, although I do like oil paints. So if you can get your hand on some oil paints, uh, I think you'll find that you really like working with them. They're, they're really great. A little bit more... Um, I think it's something about the pigmentation. When you dilute it, it doesn't lose its uh, strength quite as much, uh, which I like. All right, so I'm just going over this uh, thing again, staying away from the neck and chest, at least the front of the neck. And I can go down to the uh, legs as well. Sorry, I'm out of camera shot there. Like so. Oh, why'd I do that? I went under his belly. That's okay. Take a little bit of uh, thinner on a uh, or water, depending on what you're doing, at the end of a brush. Just apply a little thinner to there, a little extra towel. You just blot off the excess. This doesn't ensure that the paint will come off, but it does ensure that when I go under there with white paint, it won't fight me quite as hard because there won't be as much pigment under there. So. I guess it's probably a good thing to show you what can happen if you make the mistake of painting on the wrong part. So, not the end of the world. You might get a little bit of mixing with the red, and uh, in that case, you know, just wait for that uh, oil to dry. And there you go, there's your big downside to oil. It takes a lot longer to dry. So, a lot of people prefer acrylic for that reason. And I actually prefer that quality of acrylic that it dries so nicely. So again, I'm going to try to stay away from the chest if I can. There's a little connecting point right uh, between the chest, right, right, kind of like right over the chest that we've got. So you can catch that. And uh, just leave that white underbelly if you can. Get the legs. Leave a little bit more of that belly showing. Can I see that knife? Thanks. Clean that off. Got a little bit more paint on there than I would like. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so we got that cute little coloring going on there. I'm going to add a little bit more, a uh, little tiny bit more to the pigment there, like make it a little bit darker. Not much. I don't want it to be dark by any means. Yeah, do the head. The actual, you know, the inside of the ear, man, excuse me, I keep bumping it out of frame. The inside of the ear will actually be a little bit white. As well, so again, really trying to avoid those eyes. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, right around his mouth, he's also got uh, a, a bit of white. So I'm going to avoid kind of above his, or, I'm sorry, below his mouth. Just leave a little ridge like so. Of, uh, of no paint. Right. And if you get a little bit on his nose, that's okay. We're going to go over that with a really intense red. That's going to look good. Coming under his neck. A 
around his face. Oh, his ears. And if we accidentally bump his little antlers, it's not the end of the world. skunk stripe on his tail and that's looking pretty good you can darken any area that you see needs to be darkened might take a little bit more red down to the belly doesn't need to be that much white down there I'm just kinda looking for uh, areas that I missed looking pretty good you can darken any areas that you want to if you want to add a little bit more pigment to your wash it's not a big deal. In fact, one of the things I like to do is add the pigment a little bit more heavy, a little more saturated, and then take my paper towel and just dab off, really lightly dab off the excess. It kind of creates this like little, uh, almost like a weathered look. You can wait for this to dry as well and take sandpaper and just take the highlights off, kind of makes it look antiqued. That's something uh, that... Uh, Linker and I were talking about on a Coffee and Carving Show. If you haven't checked that out, that's a little podcast that we have. Let's kind of talk about all things relating to carving and what we do. Um, you know, making a big part of our incomes on uh, wood carving. Now I'm just going to uh, dip a separate brush into a tiny bit of uh, white paint. And it looks like I got my uh, extra brush a little dirty, so I'm going to clean it off. Off camera here. Alright, now I'm just going to take a little bit of white uh, that's slightly diluted. And come in and get that neck area. Okay, so I'm just going to blot a little bit of white in there, and then uh, I don't want it to be too intense, so I'll, again, I'll take my paper towel, and I'll just kind of dab off extra if it looks a little too bright, right? That's kind of the name of the game. And then it's really subtle, right? Barely lighter than the wood color. So I'm going to come to the tail, back side of the tail, same thing here. Okay, and if you accidentally get a little bit of uh, seepage over the edge, not the end of the world. You can uh, fix that. Cool. And I'll just dab off the extra. Oh, I was going to. Like so. All right, looking good. I'm going to uh, take a little bit of white, just barely touch the edge of the toes. You can see in the uh, animation that he's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of white on his toes, like so. Okay, a little bit more, and take off the extra again with our towel, so it's nice and subtle almost disappears. But, uh, that's kind of the way I like it to be honest. It's just a real light tone of white. Looks more natural that way, I think. Alright, so add a little bit more thinner. Come in with that white to the mouth area. Come around that mouth and paint it white. Hmm. 
Might as well paint the inside white. <coughs> All right, and uh, just a little tiny touch of white in the inside of the ear, like so. Can brush off the excess again. Also get the excess off of the mouth because it looks a little, a little bright around the mouth too. When you're blotting this, it's helpful to kind of blot away the white, uh, kind of straight down, because it looks like you, know, you can kind of make a little bit of a blending situation happen, and don't necessarily want those uh, areas to be blended. Uh, one would be a little bit more separate. A little blending is fine, but we're good. We're good. A little blending is okay. Could even take a little tiny, tiny bit more white and just kind of come up and straighten that. Like so. All right. Very good. Let's get those uh, eyeballs in. I'm going to get back into that white with a little thinner. And just get the uh, outside corner of the eye. Going to leave this area here that the front part is going to be black. Same thing here, just this back section and white. I'm going to leave that front area for some black, just a touch of black. Okay, now I'm going to go back in to the, kind of the black with my red brush, because uh, a little red on the brush is going to make less of a difference with the black than uh, a little uh, white on the brush. That would turn into a gray. All right, so we've got our black. Just going to take a little bit of that black. And uh, that's a little round kind of thing. Just like so. <laughs> Trying to make that a little bit sharper. Not bad, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna get a little bit more pigmentation in there. It's a little thin and it tends to kind of wander where it wants to go. So I'm gonna get a little bit more pigmentation in there, that way I have control over it. It wouldn't even hurt to have uh, a bit of a, a thicker brush here as well, because the thickness of my brush is making it a little bit sloppier. Okay. Oh, look how cute he's starting to look. Take that black on the uh, antlers. He's starting to look pretty adorable, I, I have to say. I think because I'm still new to this um, kind of whittling thing, I am... Uh, you know, not new to wood carving, of course, but new to this whittling thing. It's just, it stands out to me as such a fun little, uh, so rewarding to have these little projects that take less time and uh, just so much fun. So I'm going to dab off the extra white, a little bit of the extra black. Just want the color fastness to be a little bit less extreme, uh, if that's the right word for it, the color fastness. Just dabbing it a little bit here and there. Same with the antlers, little button antlers. Want this to be kind of uh, almost like antiqued, right? So I don't want it to be too intense. I don't want those colors to look like a toy was painted. I want it to look like uh, an old carving was kind of discovered, right? Like, oh, this could be from the uh, this could from could be from the era when this movie was created or something. You know, that's the idea. All right. So finally, this is going to be. Uh, I don't know if it's the most important part, but it's definitely uh, to me. It's probably the highlight. We're going to uh, create his his nose. I mean, gosh, his characteristic nose. That's what makes Rudolph Rudolph, right? So I'm just going to clean my brush a little. I'm going to go into the red paint this time. Very little dilution, right? I mean, 
We're kind of breaking the rules here. We went for an antique look, but we want that nose to be pretty intense. So maybe just, if there's any dilution at all, just a tiny little bit. I don't want it to be super watery. Just a tiny bit of thinner added. And I'm going to come on to that nose. Make sure I'm in focus here. There we are. Just really slowly, cautiously adding the red to his nose. Take your time with this. Just a little bit of, pr very little pressure applied, just like Bob Ross used to say, two hairs like that. His nose is in place, and he's looking like Rudolph the freaking red nose reindeer. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Uh, again, this is the diluted white. I might even dab it off, and I'm going to get that belly as well, because remember we had that little mistake with the belly. So you can uh, decrease the opacity, meaning uh, just go with a little bit more of a pure white down there to cover up that little mistake and just come on down there and then you know, try to avoid the legs if you can just blot a little bit of white in his chest and it looks like we bumped the leg a little bit not the end of the world we can wipe that off again using our uh, Paper towel, even a little brush with a little thinner on it will work. Okay. <laughs> One other thing you really can do here is if you're worried about it, you can take your knife and uh, carve off that little area and just re add. <laughs> You're red. You can even use your finger. <laughs> How's that for a rudimentary way of fixing things? Or, uh, I guess, uh, not rudimentary, caveman like, right? So now our leg is repaired. Not that all covered in white like it was. A little white's fine, but, uh, you know, because you might see it trail down, but. That's the benefit of using a smaller brush, so you might actually benefit from using just a little bit smaller of a brush, but anyway. There's that. I'm going to dab off the excess with a towel. Really being careful here not to uh, get that white all over the body. So I'll dab, fold, new spot, dab, fold, find a new spot, dab, fold, find a new spot. In other words, I'm really trying not to. Uh, Really trying not to get that red mixed in with that white and uh, create pink, or get the white on the red, and uh, you know just kind of wash out the colors, mix them up too much. All right, there we go. And because you went a little heavier with the pigmentation, you can kind of dab you know, a little bit more. But. Uh, Gosh, if you ask me, that is a pretty successful little carving. It was lots of fun. Got that little white chest there. And uh, I guess to conclude this, I might take a little bit more of that reddish brown with my finger and make a little bit less of a white crown on, or a, a white throat. Just take a little bit of that out. Right? A little more imperfect. If you look at the uh, animation, even his neck is not quite as perfectly... Uh, white there it's a little bit of uh it's a little bit of encroachment which is okay All right so there we go that looks a little bit more natural and uh and then just a tiny bit of black actually believe it or not on the feet makes sense right because of the little uh well i guess they're are they hooves i don't really know and get back in there with the black and just a touch at the nail at the tip like so just like so. That's it. All right. All right, guys. That's that. Um, dab off the excess. And come on. That's pretty cute, right? It's our little project. 
took us a bit, but uh, absolutely worth it. And uh, as an ornament, uh, your kids, your grandkids, they're going to freak out when they see this thing. I mean, it's just uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I hope this was something that you uh, feel excited to try out on your own. I know this uh, this is definitely rewarding for me. It was a, it was kind of a new idea, uh, and uh, I appreciate you guys and your comments. It's actually a commenter who came up with the idea to do this. So, as with many of the ideas, I really appreciate it. And uh, see you guys in the next one. And again, I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in today and watching this video. It means a lot that you support. And uh, of course, that usual stuff, click the like button, uh, subscribe, if you will, uh, to see more of these videos. Uh, it's a free service, so I do appreciate the support and the subscriptions. Uh, as well, check out the uh, uh, notifications bell below. Hit that. It gives you a notification every time I uh, post a video. And finally, you can support me and uh, kind of access uh, the database of knowledge and content that I've created over the past three years. So uh, kind of my main gig right now is contributing uh, instructional content to the online school. It focuses on the face. There's a lot of bark material in there, uh, carving uh, cottonwood bark. Um, but it's applicable to uh, basswood, butternut, um, many other materials, including even uh, stone. So that being said, you know, as some of the tools are different, uh, it's a relevant uh, instructional tool. Over 55 plus videos, uh, it's a very affordable uh, price to monthly fee of $25. Uh, monthly, if you subscribe yearly, I think it's even uh, less. It's like $22.50. And uh, yeah, it's really honestly uh, thousands of dollars worth of content uh, on the school. And uh, it's just the way that I've uh, organized it is put it on the uh, database there of the school and you can access that and uh, try it out. I do encourage you if you're uh, starting out in carving, uh, it's an excellent resource. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, call it a day for now and I will see you in the next one. Say bye.